Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Tim from Chasing the Joneses, and I have a question for you today. Are you tired of your RV looking tired? I mean, we have traveled all over the place, and one of the things that we've noticed, especially with our own RV, but we've seen it with many other RVs, is that the RVs just look tired. If you take a look behind me, you'll notice that the graphics behind me look wore out. I mean, they just look dated, they're tired, they're cracked, and uh, and I see that all over the place as we're driving from place to place. Of course, our RV is 20 years old, and we want to give it a little bit of a, a facelift, if you will. So on this episode, I am going to show you how to take this and turn it into this and so keep watching and we're going to show you how we did it right here in our 2000 Damien Challenger All right, well, before we begin uh, working on the surface of these graphics, the first thing I want to do is uh, kind of throw out a disclaimer. Number one, that not all graphics are the same. Number two, uh, some you'll find that are fading and they're, uh, they're kind of cracked, and those are the ones that you can work on. The other ones, some you'll see that are actually, actually curling on the ends and literally peeling off. And, and those you may want to just take off uh, if, you know, just take those completely off again. Uh, let me just say, here are some things that you really need to have. Here's some items, and I'll list those in the description down below. Here's some items that you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need a, uh, a bucket uh, with some water in it. Second, you're going to need a towel uh, to be able to wipe it off. Uh, third, that you're going to need a bottle of soft scrub, that's what we've been using, and uh, some 3M uh, green scrub pads, and then of course you're going to need a handy dandy uh, sandpaper block, it works very well, I encourage you to do that. We also have some extra sandpaper, different, uh, different variations of it. And then once you have those items, you'll need to have, that's right, you'll need to get some of this great frog tape. So we outline ours with uh, frog tape, and there's a specific reason why we do that. And I'll show you that as we go along. But the first thing we want to do is we want to really kind of work in this area and kind of just rough it up a little bit, if you will, so it would the, the paint will uh, adhere to it better. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this green scrub pad, put it in water. We're going to put a little soft scrub on it. And I got the lemon smelling one, so it smells good as I'm working. And so we're just going to put it on there and we're going to work it in. And we're just going to scrub it uh, as best as possible, not worrying too much about the overrun because we're going to wash, we're going to wipe that off with the towel here in a few minutes. Uh, once we get this section done, I'm going to show you the next step to do. Well, here we are, we've got water on the rag and, and we're just wiping it down uh, to ensure that it's got, it's clean. And then we're gonna dry it off a little bit. And then the next step, what we're going to do is we're gonna take out, we're gonna take out our sand block. And uh, this is a, a fine sand block, so it's not very coarse, because you don't wanna, you don't wanna dig into the motor home. You know, you don't wanna sand the whole entire graphic off. You just want to be able to have it roughed up enough. So we're gonna, we're just gonna go over this. We're gonna, we're gonna scrub on it for a little while. And we're gonna move all the way down. We're gonna do the whole entire graphic that we're going to paint. We're gonna do this all in one. One of the things you need to make sure of is that you get down here. That's why I like this right here. You see this edge that it has right here. You can get right down to the bottom of that, and you can, you can just work. It's your way down and it will get all the way down to there of the graphic. And so, so those are the couple things we're going to do. So we're going to continue on and then I'm going to show you the next, the next step. Okay. Now with it sanded, what we're going to do is we're going to just, 
uh, remove all the dust that's on there. And then comes the nice fun part. The fun part, the next part is the probably the hardest part to this, and that is taping it off. And so now we're going to go ahead and start taping it off. And the first thing that we do is we take our frog tape, and this is what we're going to use to tape off the whole thing. Now, some people use pinstriping paint to get it started because you can get right on the edge. But you know what I found? I found that this frog tape is really, really good at getting on the edge. In fact, I mean, we even used it on, can use it on the curves and everything else. So we're going to get started with that. Let me bring you up pretty close to uh, this so you can see the exact thing that we're doing here. Now, I, I want to share with you this, th this point here because uh, what happens is this, is that when you're touching this, you can feel the graphic and you can feel the edges. Of so what you're going to do is you're going to take your tape and you're going to get right on that edge and you're gonna hold it right there at that edge. And so what happens is, is you're just gonna come down and you're just going to make sure that it's right on the edge. Now, I don't want you to be too worried about you know, how you tape it. It's, taping is the longest uh, part of this whole process other than the paint drying, <laughs> believe it or not. And so what happens is when you get here, you can actually see if you're not close enough and so you're able to pull this tape and then the second thing I want you to understand if you're over it you can just take your nail and just tap it up just a little bit just enough to pull it off there so you get a good seal and that's why we use the frog tape is because we're getting a good seal so we're going to tape this up and I'm going to show you the next the next part Okay, I'm gonna just do this door section right here to show you how it all works. And so the reason I'm doing the door first is because we're gonna be using the door coming in and out. And so we wanna get this part of it accomplished. And so we've, we've taken the green frog tape and what I need to do now is what you need to do next is, is run your fingernail along the edges so that it creates a good solid seal and so now it looks good now the next step in this process is to take your painters tape and go around this creating a a bigger kind of an area so we're going to do that real quick and i'm going to get right back with you as you can see the blue tape went on fairly fast the reason why we're putting this blue tape on is so that we the paper when we apply this paper that we're going to put on here that it does not um that it does not go down and get into the green tape area so you want to have that that connection so next we're going to put on we're going to mask the rest of this off with paper and uh, watch how we do that all right so as you see we have taped all of this off i'm just going to move the camera back just a little bit to show you the whole process of what we've done we've taped that area off and now we are going to just double check again making sure that there is no way that other paint like right in here so we want to cut that make sure that's straight it's good and make sure it's all sealed in there so nothing can can become an overspray because that's what your main concern is but if you have an overspray it's easy to take off once you once you see it you just hit it with a little bit of soft scrub and it'll come right off so here's a tip i want to give you a quick tip watch where the wind is blowing because if you're parked to another trailer you certainly don't want the wind blowing towards that trailer while you're out here trying to trying to create a new graphic on your RV you don't want any extra paint going their way so just try to check make sure where and just wait for a few minutes if you have to to see if it calms down enough to where you can paint 
but I like to paint when the wind is not really blowing a lot. A day where there's a lot of wind, don't try to paint. It's gonna be extremely hard for you and the paint will go all over everything else. So let's get the painting. Again, we're just gonna take nice, easy strokes. We're gonna do a nice, light first coat. We're not trying to pile it on. We're just trying to get a nice little coat on there, covering it all. And now the waiting game begins. So here's what I like about this paint. This paint says that the that you can apply a second coat, right? It says wait one minute between each coat. Drying application time. So you sprayed a light coat. It said to to spray light coats on it until you get the amount of coats that you want. And then it says it will dry to the touch in 20 minutes. That's the game changer with this paint, folks, because you don't want a paint that's going to take hours to dry. You want something that's going to be quick drying so that you can continue to move on so you're not stuck with this on the side of your RV for, for 48 hours or three weeks or whatever the case may be. This is a quick drying paint. It, and again, remind you that this is a paint and primer all in one. And it's very important that you understand that because you need that primer because that primer helps fill in some of those cracks that are there. Okay, now that we've got the ample amount of coats on there, and by the way, I put on uh, four coats of the paint. And so now we're going to put on the clear gloss enamel. And what I like about this is that it doesn't take no time to put on several coats at a time and then allowing it to dry. So here we go. Okay, so we've got the clear on there and then we're gonna let that dry for a little while and then we can go ahead and put on another coat. Uh, and we wanna put on at least three coats of clear on this so that uh, so you will see a night it will shine as you drive down the road now here's a tip when you are working in a smaller area go ahead and uh, start prepping another area with the soft scrub and sanding and then taping and then masking off you can do things simultaneously and uh, you can get a lot of work done that way but here's what the door looks like now in that spot that we painted it fresh clean looks good uh, we have a little touch up on the end we'll do with a paintbrush and then i'll be ready to go for the road now again another tip for you is that when you're peeling off the paper don't scrunch up the paper and throw it in the garbage you can reuse the paper in fact i have it strung all along the the rv because i'm taping off another section to get painted anyway this is how you do it and when we transform this it'll look just as good as new and so that's how you do it how you can transform the look of your rv from the old tired rv to a new fresh look and even change colors well there you have it that's today's work and you see how great that new stripe really looks i mean it looks fantastic and so i want to encourage you not to shy away from this type of a project because you can do this kind of a project. It is simple, it is time consuming, and I believe anyone can do it if they use the proper tools, the proper paint, and the proper sealant. So stand by for uh, part two, where we are going to show you how my wife, Miss Gail, how she takes care of that logo right there it's going to be a very good video so stay tuned to part two look for that remember to subscribe and to also hit that bell so you get the notification we'll see you next time down the road